What's good everyone, it's Steve from Sneaker Tech Talk, back with another video today. And for today's video, we will be taking a look at the performance review of the Air Jordan 38. All right, so as far as the traction goes on the Air Jordan 38s, as you can see here, I did opt for a pair over from Asia with the solid outsole. And this does have a multi-directional herringbone traction pattern. And how these perform on clean floors are absolutely amazing. I had no issues. I didn't have to wipe at all. I just was playing and kind of was in the flow of playing. And every so often I was wiping out of habit, but these had a fantastic bite. Now on dirty floors, you will have to wipe about every four or five plays, but overall it's really not too bad. They do collect a little bit of dust. I do believe the translucent outsole variety collects a lot more than this solid one here, but how these performed, I'm really happy with it. As far as durability, I seem to wear away a lot of portions of the outsole here on the medial side, and there's really no wearing away at all with this solid rubber outsole. So. I'm really happy with them thus far. As far as outdoors go, the grooves are decently deep, but as you know, this shoe does retail for 200 US dollars. So I would probably just stray away from outdoor usage, but as far as indoors, they're absolutely fantastic. So as far as the traction goes on the Air Jordan 38, I would have to give them a very solid eight and a half out of 10. So as far as the cushioning goes on the Air Jordan 38, it is a huge upgrade from last year in my opinion. So directly under the insole, you do have that full length zoom strobe, and that just feels absolutely amazing. I prefer the full length zoom strobe over having full length plus, plus the double stacked in the forefoot. It just seems a little bit wobbly. That's how the 36s were. The 37s just had double stacked in the forefoot and Formula 23 in the back. I'm happy to say that they have went away from Formula 23 here in the Air Jordan 38. So like I said, you're getting that full length zoom strobel. And then the black portion here is actually just Phylon. So it's pretty springy, pretty nice underfoot, really no break in time. And then the red portion is where the upgrade was made. So this is actually Cushlon 3.0. Now you might ask, what is Cushlon 3.0? I was able to ask someone from brand Jordan. They didn't really have a answer for me. All I can see basically as far as the way it feels is it's very soft and very spongy, more so than your standard Cushlon. So, so the Cushlon 3.0 is running full length, as you can see here at the forefoot, the red portions, all the way to the heel, right to the heel at the back as well. So that just offers some really nice impact protection directly underfoot at the bottom of the shoe, and then the Phylon, and then the full length zoom strobe offers a very nice ride. As far as the heel to toe transition, it's slightly caged at the back, nothing in the middle. It's very natural underfoot. As you can see here, there is a bit of a curvature to the Air Jordan 38s. And overall for impact protection, I had no issues. I'm about 210 pounds at six foot two or six foot three. And I really enjoyed that full length zoom strobe setup with the rest of the foam underfoot. Now, as far as how close you are to the ground in the forefoot, I would actually have to say it's pretty similar to the LeBron 20s as far as the forefoot goes for being close to the floor. So in this, you had that zoom uh, turbo bag, whereas in this, you're getting all of that foam and the full length zoom. But I am happy to say this year with the cushion setup, with that full length zoom strobe, the Phylon, and that Cushlon 3.0, I think it's a huge upgrade from the last couple of years with the 36s and the 37s. Let me know if you guys had played in these yet and what you guys think as far as the cushioning goes. But for me, I enjoyed my time thoroughly in the Air Jordan 38. So as far as the cushioning goes, I'm gonna have to give these nine out of 10. One last thing I did wanna mention as far as the cushioning goes, for the insole on these guys, you are getting a recycled kind of foam insole and it does have that cutout for the Zoom airbag and it's actually pretty comfortable underfoot. I did try the uh, move insoles in these and I did like them. These just offer that nice sensation as far as that zoom air goes. So that's what you're getting as far as the insole in the Air Jordan 38. As far as the materials go, last year there were a ton of people complaining about that leno weave, which I find funny because a lot of people seem to love it on the 36s, but on the 37s they moved over to a really, really thin leno weave. Now everyone was complaining they wanted better materials, raw materials, and Jordan brand did deliver on that. So you do have kind of a canvas material here on the lateral and medial side or on your ankle bone, some synthetic leather here at the back of the shoe. And then you do have kind of like a fly knit material here, 
that is see-through as well. So you're getting a bit of that as well for that airflow and breathability. And then down the eye stay, down to the toe box, you are getting a synthetic leather that's very nice. It's really thin, so there's really no break in time and it's very pliable on foot. So it forms to your foot shape very nicely. One thing I will say about this shoe is there's really no break in time as far as the materials go, which I really enjoyed. And then on the tongue, you basically have kind of a neoprene material on the tongue here at the front, running all the way down. Some more holes punched out in the tongue for some more breathability. So overall, I'm very happy to say that I really enjoyed the materials this year over last year's shoe, and they really did not sacrifice weight at all. So you're getting that canvas, the knit, and the synthetic leather with that neoprene tongue. I think it's a huge hit. So as far as the materials go, I'm gonna have to give them a very solid nine out of 10. So as far as the weight goes on the Air Jordan 38s, these are a size 10 and a half, my true to size in most Nike and Jordan brand shoes. And these come in at 15.05 ounces. So slightly lighter than the LeBron 20s, which was his lightest shoe to date. So again, I think that's a perfect blend as far as what you're getting with the materials and the lightweight nature of the Air Jordan 38s. So as far as the fit goes on the Air Jordan 38s, I would say go true to size if you have a regular foot to somewhat of a medium width foot. If you have a, a wide foot, sorry, I would say go up half a size, mostly because of this TPU plate that wraps up the side on each side. You might get some tension by your pinky toe or big toe there, but as far as the overall sizing goes for most people, I would say go true to size. I went with my size 10 and a half, and my toe is just near the end of the shoe here, which is how I like it because there is a very snug one-to-one -one fit. As far as the tongue goes, what you're getting with that, you're basically getting a half booty construction tongue. So right down the eye stay here on the inside, about halfway down, it is connected. So there will be no moving around, which is definitely nice and definitely offers a nice overall fit. The tongue I will say is pretty high on these when you do have them laced up. It does kind of look like an Air Jordan 5 tongue, but overall the fit is nice. I had no issues, very snug, one-to-one -one fit. The back of the shoe has tons of padding at the back. It's super thick. Um, so it really conforms around your heel very nicely. But if you guys have worn these, sound off in the comments on what you guys think as far as the fit goes. But for me, I'm gonna have to give them a very solid nine out of 10 because I never like dead space in a shoe. I like a very form fitted shoe, one to one. And these offer that with that very nice and tapered toe box. So last but not least at all, as far as the support goes on the Jordan 38s, you do have that internal heel counter at the back of the shoe and it is very rigid. That's offering all the support you need at the back of the shoe as far as the heel counter goes. Moving down from that, you do have this X plate that does run through the midsole, underneath the outsole and across, up on the other side on the medial side and the same thing on the lateral side, it runs through the bottom and up here. So what that's offering you is fantastic lateral support. As you can see, it does wrap up where your foot is sitting within this midsole here at the back and at the toe, the same thing on the medial side. So as far as lateral support, when you're making those hard lateral cuts, the Air Jordan 38 has zero issues at all. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, when it runs across here on the outsole, it actually offers a kind of four foot support plate. So overall, as far as where this plate runs through, coupled with that zoom airbag, the torsional rigidity on this guy is crazy. It still has some really nice forefoot flex here, right here where the portions of the outsole are cut out. So you're not gonna have any issues with that. And this and knit material right here kind of offers as like a seatbelt with strands of material. So when you're making those hard lateral cuts coupled with that X plate, you're gonna have no issues in the Jordan 38s. And then just the way that this eye stay does lace up as well, if you really crank those laces down, just the overall support features on the Jordan 38 are fantastic. And then at the bottom, you do have this outrigger here on the lateral side. So you can see it kind of flares out. You can definitely see it from the top down view. So that's preventing your foot from teetering over if you land on someone's foot. So overall, the support features on the Air Jordan 38 are fantastic. Now, a lot of people were trying to draw similarities to the Air Jordan 8 because obviously 30 years later, this is 
kind of loosely inspired. Now, instead of having the X on top of the shoe, they decided to do it on the bottom. And I'm really happy with what Jordan Brand and the design team did with this because as far as the support goes, this is probably the most supportive Jordan Brand shoe in the last couple decades because I had zero issues as far as that any of that went. But again, sound off in the comments. What do you guys think as far as the support goes? I will mention that this plate here by the pinky toe did cause some pinching right off the bat. But after about 30 to 45 minutes, it did go away. I did hear from a couple people where they had to return them because they had so much pain here by the pinky toe. That wasn't the case for me, but that's not to say it won't happen to you. So again, if you're a wide footer, I would go up half a size. But as far as the support goes on the Jordan 38s as a whole, what you're getting with that internal heel counter, the X plate, the knit, and just this eye stay with the outrigger and the four foot shank plate, I would have to give these a fantastic nine and a half out of 10. So that's gonna do it for today's performance review on the Air Jordan 38. Sound off in the comments if you guys had played in these yet. And as far as the design features go, I like what Jordan Brand is doing as far as kind of keeping it new as far as the design features, but kind of taken from some of the shoes back in the day. Obviously this is very loosely inspired by the Air Jordan 8s. One really cool thing that I did see at the back of the shoe that Nightwing did point out is there is this red portion at the top and the rest is black. Now that is inspired by Jordan's calf sleeve, how he rolled the black sleeve down and showed the red at the top. And I actually have one as well, a similar one to what he played in. Uh, it is a grizzly knee sleeve. I just roll it down so that you can't see that logo and then play in it like such. So it's more or less kind of what was inspired as far as the back of the tongue on the Air Jordan 38. But as far as a shoe as a whole, this is a fantastic basketball shoe. It's just a tragedy that it comes at 200 US dollars, 260 Canadian. Um, it's kind of a hard pill to swallow, but I would say if you can wait until these go on sale, this shoe is a fantastic buy. Because, but as a whole, as far as the performance features go on this shoe, with the traction, the cushion, the support features, and just really what this shoe is offering you with breathability and kind of in a lightweight package, in my opinion at least, I think this is the best shoe from Jordan Brand in a very long time. A lot of people put the 34s on a pedestal, but with that full length Zoom Strobel and Cushlon 3.0 in these, as far as the cushioning goes for me at least, I enjoyed the setup far greater on the Air Jordan 38. But like I said, that's gonna do it for today's video. As always, if you guys can like, comment, and subscribe, that does help the channel a ton. And check me out over on Instagram at 23MJ88, as it is an extension of my YouTube channel with all my pickups, basketball footage, and nostalgia as a whole. As always, thanks for watching today's video, and until next time, peace.